Why are we whittling our dreams down? Why are we watering them down? Imagine now, just for a moment, your project, your plan, your business, whatever. Think of a plan. Think of where you want God to take it. Think of where you want it to be. You got that? Think bigger. No small plans yeah. Come on, give Jesus praise. No little plans. Evening, family, and welcome to church. Can I get hallelujah? We get to meet in the building, praise Jesus. So welcome to everyone online and in our campuses. We are so excited to have you joining us. We are excited to have everyone in the building. Enjoy. Open your Bible at Exodus chapter 23. Now, I've heard some from so many different people who have been to the Oral Roberts University, and they say that Oral Roberts... When, uh, whenever you go and see him in his office, he had a sign on the front of his desk saying, No small plans here. I like that. No small plans here. You see, if you're a kingdom person, you'll understand that. And that's what I want to do. I want to evoke us so that we, we stop whittling down, watering down what God's going to do in our lives. Stop feeling intimidated. Stop, feel, stop allowing the persecutions of what people say, what people think. People think, I just don't think God would do that. Well, I don't want, it doesn't matter what you think. I'm going with what he said. See, I'm not going to be influenced by people that are negative and, 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 and naysayers and people that just don't understand. And, you know, sometimes people are nervous of getting out there and expecting the best and the biggest. And I serve a big God. I serve a huge God. I serve a God that is the God of the abundant. He's the God of more than enough. He's the God that provides. He's the God that heals. He's the God that delivers. Family God, don't let the song be knocked out of you. Don't let the praise be knocked out of you. Don't be slammed down into a corner. Don't be held in a cage. You begin to praise God and you burst those prison walls open. Jesus said he's anointed to preach good news to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, preach deliverance to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those that are oppressed. It's time for the acceptable year of the Lord. It is time for your jubilee. Say it's time. Tell your neighbor, just reminding you, no small plans here. Exodus 23. This has so inspired me. Listen to what it says. Verse 25, you shall serve the Lord your God, and he, he will, he will what? He will, he will, not maybe, he will bless your bread and your water. What's the blessing do? Multiplies it. What's he talking about? Your meal. See, when we pray the, the, the blessing over our meal, we're not, you know, we're not just doing, will someone say grace? I, I, I always, if someone says, Pastor Allen, will you please say grace? Okay, grace. You see, I, I'm, I'm done with religion. I don't want to go through to bless the hands that made the food and bless the land and our body. Why do we only bless the hands? Bless the hands that made the food. <laughs> bless the whole person. No, why do we pray over our food? Yes, why? Yeah, it is. He will bless the bread and water. Father, thank you. You always look after us. We always provide it. He multiplies your food. And what happens? He will take sickness from your midst, and no one, no one shall suffer miscarriage. No one will be barren, and I will fulfill the number of your days. I will fulfill the number of your days. Hallelujah. Family of God, until you've finished your assignment, don't ever, I don't want to hear anybody saying, well, God took him. No. No. You leave when you're done. I said you leave when you're done. Are you finished your project? Are you finished your project called life? Have you left your legacy? Have you established what you've come yet to do? Until that time, I'm not going anywhere. Hallelujah. Listen to Psalm 105 verse 37. He also brought them out with silver and gold, and there was none feeble among his tribes. It was none feeble. None. None. Do you think they left all the old people in Egypt? No. Everybody left together. 
the whole family left. Dad, mom, children, granny, grandpa, great granny, great grandpa, great great granny, grandpa, everybody left, and there was none feeble. None feeble. Come on. See what we can believe for. That's under the old covenant. Now, family, I don't know what the state of them was just before they were delivered because they were slaves for 400 years. And you've seen what it's like to be a slave. You know, whenever you see a year of slaves, it's, it's, it's usually very poor, low hygiene, low bad food. You expect to find somebody sick and crippled and everything. But here's the thing. They were poor as well. They had nothing. Slaves. But they had 400 years of back pay. <laughs> yeah. And then God says, go lend from them. Didn't he say that? Yeah. Just go lend it from you. Do you mind if I borrow your, your, your necklace, borrow your watch, borrow your, your gold, your silver? And they did. I don't know whether they thought they are going to get it back. But then once they had borrowed it, God said, now go. And they left with all the gold and silver. Hello. The day before poor slaves, the day they leave, they are wealthy beyond. It's the entire wealth of Egypt. Why do you think that Pharaoh decided to chase them back? He was he didn't get his stuff back. But not only that, God restored them. God healed them. And there was none feeble amongst them. So family of God, as I say, I don't know. It doesn't say there was anybody feeble before, but if there was, they were healed to leave. They had to go walk in the wilderness. So God restores them. So no matter what your state was, you can believe God to restore you. I don't care what has happened. Maybe people think, well, it's too late. I'm too old. I'm too this. I'm too that. This has just happened. You know, I'm inspiring you to start believing big. Start believing the best. Tell your neighbor, no small plans here now. Because that's what we're talking about. Coming out full provision, fully healthy, fully supplied. we got a job to do. And we're not going to do it on the back foot. We are advancing. We're doing it big. And we're going to get out there. And we're going to see major revival. No small plans here. Hallelujah. Joel chapter 2, verse 23. Be glad then. You children of Zion. Look at your neighbor. Are they smiling yet? Be glad then. Be glad. Family, we are not a negative people. We don't walk around with our lips on the ground. We're not complaining and moaning. We're a positive people. Oh, no, 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 no. No, no small plans here. Be glad, you children of Zion. Rejoice in the Lord your God. He has given you the former rain faithfully, and he will cause the rain to come down for you, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. We already spoke about that in times past. The former rain is the initial outpouring of the Holy Spirit. The latter rain is you and me. This is the restoration of all things. This is the move of the God, move of the power of the Holy Spirit. And we right now are in the latter rain. Hallelujah. And the threshing floors shall be full of wheat. Full of wheat. What's wheat? The Word of God. Bread. Amen. The Word of God will be preached. Family of God, I tell you, today more than ever before, you can go anywhere and listen to the true Word of God, and there's so much teaching out there. The threshing floors are full of wheat, and your vats shall overflow with new wine and oil. Talking about the presence of the Holy Spirit. Your vats overflow, overflow, overflow. What's overflow mean? It's more than you need. So you are filled with the Holy Spirit, but it's not just for you. It's flowing out of you into the lives of other people. Hallelujah. Say so no small plans here. And so I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the crawling locust, the consuming locust, and the chewing locust. My great army which I sent amongst you, you shall eat in peace.
plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God who's dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be put to shame my people shall never be put to shame family don't ever be embarrassed about standing on the word of God if God has given you a promise be public about it be open about it profess it openly and don't worry about what if it doesn't work no small plans here you declare the word God says he watches over his word to perform it and he says yeah my people will never be put to shame I don't know what your background was. I don't know where you come from, your history. And I don't know why you may be carrying a hurt inside. And some people feel too ashamed to even show up in church. And that family must be wiped away. You don't, not here at the Bay Christian Family Church or any church that's walking in the fullness of God. Anybody that walks in this building is accepted. You don't ever have to walk in with your shoulders hung, drooped, and your head hung down. And I don't know if I can go to church because I don't feel as good, and I don't know if they'll accept me down there. I, there's no more shame. Jesus bore it away. He took it from you. And I don't care what has happened in your life, where you've come from, you understand Every one of us have had a history. Every one of us, and yes, some people may think their sin is worse than another. But here's the thing. Every one of us sinned in ignorance. We did not know. And that's what sinners do. Sinners sin. So stop being ashamed because that's how all of us started. And the Bible says there was none righteous amongst us. But when we chose God, He made us the righteousness of God. He wiped out your sin and transgression. And He's made you accepted in the Son. And if God accepts you, so do we. And if anybody does any otherwise, yeah, then just know what Pastor Allen and Janine stand for. I don't care what any, even if it's a leader, if they, don't, if they violate what I've just said, yeah, they're out of line. There's no shame yet. I said no shame. He took that shame away. He says, yeah, I will take the shame away from you. My people will not be put to shame. God has dealt wondrously with you. Eat in plenty and be satisfied. Eat in plenty. Hallelujah. Verse 27, then you shall know I'm in the midst of Israel. I am the Lord your God and there is no other. My people shall never be put to shame and it shall come to pass afterward. I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. I see visions all the time. Hallelujah. No small plans here. Everybody say that. Hallelujah. Look at Romans chapter 10, verse 11. The scripture says, whoever believes on him, let me see how many believe on Jesus. Bump your neighbor. Look, this is me. I'm in the book. You can put the Alan. Whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. There is no distinction between Jew and Greek, black or white, male or female. Now, I'm putting that in there because that's the devil will try and discriminate. You'll try and cause discrimination. You need to know that about racism, or any form of discrimination. It's the same spirit of division. It's just highlighted in, in the black and white because that's the most obvious that you can see. But when it comes to any form of division, Satan will try. And, and you notice how in, the, in a home, often arguments happen between a husband and wife just simply because they think different or look different. Listen, if, uh, I said it before, if there's two that are exactly think the same way, one of us is superfluous. You need your spouse to be different. I'm not talking about enjoying saying things together. You enjoy going out together. You enjoy going there together. But we want different opinions. We want to see different ways. Come on. You getting this? Why? Because it's in our differences that you see the whole. 
God creates different for different reasons. That's why we have a male and a female in a marriage. Without that, there's no children. Someone says, yeah, but, you know, the, that couple, they, 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 may, they may be the same, but they can still have, get a child. No, you still need a man or an, and a woman somewhere else to have the child. You're getting what I'm saying. So God's ordained. The man shall leave his parents, be joined with his wife, and they shall be joined together. And that's where your children come from. So you need the difference to be able to create. See that? I need you to be different. I celebrate your difference. Hallelujah. And if you understand that, that's what he's saying. You will not be put to shame. So what happens is Satan tries to put you to shame because of who you are. And you're brought up by that. So whatever happens and parents have spoken to their children and said, how come we have to do this? How come we have to sit at the back of the bus? How come we have to go? Well, that's who you are. That's just the way it is. No, that's not the way it's supposed to be. Jesus made us equal in his image, created as spirit beings, and then you put into different bodies for his purpose. So he needs me to look this way, to sound this way, to be this way, because this is specifically for his purpose. You, he's got a different plan for, and so he created you. And here's the issue. God doesn't make junk. God knew exactly what, I don't understand why God put me in this body. That's the body you needed. I'm not talking about if we've abused the body and done wrong things with it. I'm talking about your makeup, the, the race, your melan, amount of melanin in your skin and your hair and all those other things. That's how God, God created and designed you. Amen. Hallelujah. So don't allow whatever you are, whoever you are, to allow yourself to be put to shame. And if the only way the enemy is going to do that is through other people. You'll try and do it through other people, but it doesn't even matter what other people say. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what people say, it's how we receive it. And if I choose to renew my mind that God says there's now no more shame, I refuse to accept what the devil has said about me, what people have said about me, even what people think about me, that's irrelevant. Because when I stand before God, He sees me wonderful. He sees me beautiful. He sees me created in His image, and all the gifts that are in me are that which He's deposited, and I choose to respond to that, then it doesn't even matter what people say. I don't even have to get angry with it. Hallelujah. Say there's no shame yet. Whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. There's no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. God is rich to all who call upon him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, if it says God is rich to all who call upon Him, there's only one thing left for me to do. <laughs> to call on Him. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And so, until we call, doesn't matter what God's done, it's not going to manifest. And so that's where I've chosen. To say, rather than what I think I need, I'm going to go with Ephesians 3.20. If that's okay with everybody, I told God, don't put it in your Bible if you don't want me believing it. And he said, God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above what you ask or think according to the power that works in us. And so if he has released that power in the presence of the Holy Spirit, that same power that parted the Red Sea. That same power that stopped a universe so the sun and the moon could stand still. God knew how to swing those planets in a way that they wouldn't even know it. Didn't feel it in their legs at all. And yet the sun and the moon stopped. And I said, you really believe that? It's in the book. I said, don't put it there if you don't want me to believe it. It's there. And he said, God's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. That tells me you cannot outthink God. It's impossible. Do you really think? You're going to come up with a plan. 
and say, God, I've got an idea. And you put it out before him. He goes, what? <laughs> Come now, son. I'm God, I know, but you know, there are limits. We're talking about God here. We're talking about God here. You're never going to outdream God. So why are we whittling our dreams down? Why are we watering them down? That's only to please other people. That they find it more acceptable. I'm not going to let go of excellence for the sake of the mediocre. There are people that don't understand excellence. That's fine. They still have to have their minds renewed. I was there, but I've had my mind renewed. And I discovered I serve a God of excellence. A God of exceedingly. In other words, I can plan and I, I'm, I'm just going to go to God and say, how about this? And he says, that's not bad for a start. Oh, I thought that was big. No, oh, we're just getting going. You've just stepped up now. Amen. Watch what I can do. Take it further. Take it further. Take it further. And that's where I come back to it now. Imagine now, just for a moment, your project, your plan, your business, whatever. Think of a plan. Think of where you want God to take it. Think of where you want it to be. You got that? Think bigger. No small plans yeah. Come on, give Jesus praise. No little plans. Amen. Say that. No little plans yeah. <laughs> praise God. Have you already got the, the anointing juices flowing? You ready to start planning, start going beyond? Amen. Now, here's the thing, family. These things don't happen by accident. Plan it. Start planning and then plan bigger. Trust God. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Every head bowed, every eye closed. As Christians pray and intercede. Now, this begins with you as a child of God. I don't know how you came to be here tonight. Maybe you just tuned in. Maybe it popped up in your feed and you thought, let me see what this is about. But once you were here, you couldn't leave. Now, that's not by any man. That's the Spirit of God for this moment. He's kept you here to hear me say this. God loves you. God loves you. And someone says, but how can you say that? You don't even know what I've done. That's the thing. God doesn't love us based on what we've done. He loves us because He is love. And in that love, it's based on what He's done. And in His love, He sent Jesus to come and die for your and my sin. And He paid the full price. And then He rose from the dead. And today, He is alive, proving your sin is forgiven. All you have to do today is believe that. And the Word says, if you believe with your heart that Jesus is raised from the dead, confess with your mouth that He's your Lord and Savior, you will be saved. I want to lead you in that prayer now. Say this out loud with me. Dear Jesus, thank you. You died for me. You gave your life so that I could have life. And then you rose from the dead. Today you are alive. I believe that. I call you Lord. You're my Savior. From this day on, I live to serve you, to worship you. One day, I will leave this earth and I'll stand before you. And see you face to face. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God, my friend. You're born again. If you've just prayed that prayer, I'm going to ask as we close now, please go to our website, thebaycfc.org. Click on Contact Us. You'll notice there's a link there to Salvation. Click on that. Give us your details, and we'll get that information to you as well. It's a free gift from us to you. It's just something to listen to. It's going to help build your faith. Some guidelines now that you are a Christian, just something to, to give you some instruction. So welcome home. Welcome to the family. God bless you. Amen. Family, we're walking out the door tonight, charged by the power of God, filled with His Spirit, full of faith. Now keep listening to the Word. Keep reading the Word. Keep studying the Word. And stay in faith and expect 
great things to happen in your life this week. Father, we go rejoicing knowing that you never leave us nor forsake us. Angels are given charge to ensure our safety. For you said no evil befalls us, no plague comes near our dwelling. I believe that each and every person here travels safely to their destination in the name of Jesus. Now I call your family blessed. We were blessed coming in. We blessed going out. And we say no little plans here. We're ready to receive the fullness of your word. And we walk in the exceedingly abundantly above. And we thank you as others see it. They'll desire to know you and be drawn to join us in lifting your name declaring Jesus is Lord. Love your family. Have a great week. Visit Allen Bag Ministries online. At allenbagministries.org, you can find out more about Alan Bag, the call of God on his life, and more about who we are as a ministry. On our website, you will also be able to connect with us by making use of our contact details. You will also find out about the heartbeat of Alan Bag Ministries and how you can know Jesus as Lord and Savior. Hello, my friend. My name is Alan Bag, and welcome back to Wisdom for Life. On our website, you will be able to watch our current television programs as well as catch up on any previously broadcast programs you may have missed. You will also be able to find the platforms we are broadcasting on as well as join us for our live streamed services at the Bay Christian Family Church over the weekends and special occasions. If you would like to get hold of some resources taught by Alan Bagg, browse our online shop for some faith-building material that will help you further your knowledge on the many topics available. On occasion, there are also some great promotions and free study programs available. On our website, you can find out how to get involved as a partner or even find out more information about partnering with Alan Bagg Ministries. You can also make use of our easy-to-use giving facilities on our website and get involved in the many projects and ways available. Through the grace of God, Allen Bag Ministries help many to get through the challenges they face on a daily basis. And our heart is to help you in any way we can. So visit us at allenbagministries.org and let us help you identify and succeed in what the Lord has called you to do.